I am very much pleased to be invited for this international webinar on management of COVID-19 pandemic, current facts, challenges, and future prospects. I am thankful to Practitioner Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Good afternoon again to everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic has struck the global population with unparalleled speed and ferocity. The researchers around the world, they are scrambling to learn about the biology, pathology, and genetics of SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2, while clinicians are seeking treatments old and new that might slow its infectivity and deadliness. <clears throat> At first, I want to give you the latest update on COVID-19. The number of countries that are infected is total 212. Total number of infected people is 5.49 million. Total death 349,190. This is as per the WHO dashboard on 28 May 2020. And in India, total infected people is 158,613. And total death is 4,540. This is as per the coronatracker.com. And regarding the di diagnosis of the COVID-19, the RT-PCR is the only method that is being used all over the world for the diagnosis of COVID-19. And regarding its treatment, no approved treatment till now. Scientists are working for, for bringing new treatment regarding its uh, antiviral drug or, uh, or vaccines. Although my previous speakers, they have told about the, about the uh, coronavirus, but still I want to give a little bit glimpse about the coronavirus. It's a family of viruses that affects the respiratory tract. It causes disease from con common cold to pneumonia. Usually lives in bats and other wild animals. They are transmitted to humans directly or via other animals. And these viruses, they transmit between vi humans via respiratory droplets. This is the SARS coronavirus 2 structure. It contains the, it's called the coronavirus because of the, the spike proteins. The coronavirus they contains, the SARS-CoV-2 they contains four structural proteins like nucleocapsid protein, spike protein, envelope protein, membrane protein. This is a glimpse about the coronavirus. And regarding my uh, pathogen, regarding my topic, regarding my lecture on this COVID-19, it is the pathogenesis. At first, I want to give a Give you, I want to start the uh, like, uh, uh, pathogenesis with the viral entry. The pathogenesis of virus, they involve the renin angiotensin signaling pathway, oxidative stress, cell death, cytokine storm, and endothelial function. These are the pathways that involve in the pathogenesis of the SARS coronavirus 2. And when the virus they enters into the respiratory alveoli, they bind to the SE2 receptor <clears throat> and in, in, for the binding of the virus to the receptor, this spike protein and the nucleocapsid protein they help in the binding of the virus to the receptor. When, it's, when, it gets, when it binds to the receptor, the host protein, the host protease enzyme, they, they cleaves the, this uh, spike protein is into S1 and S2 subunits. Now, this S2 subunits, they, it gets uh, changed, uh, the transform, conformational ch changes occurs in the S2 subunit and they insert the transfusion peptide. And this transfusion peptide, they helps in the membrane fusion inside the host body. Now, to survive inside the host cells, the virus, they uses different tools like open reading frame, ORF, two replicate genes, slippery sequence, two polyproteins, like non-structural polyproteins, like NSP15, this is a non-structural polyprotein that attacks the human system during its replication, during its viral replication. <clears throat> now the two replicas genes, they, they use the negative RNA as a template and make small overlapping RNA, mRNAs. And the, they, they form the different proteins like nucleo, nucleoprotein, 
spike protein, envelope proteins, and uh, membrane proteins. These proteins, these structural proteins, along with the non-structural proteins, they binds, they get associated with the endoplasmic reticulum Golgi intermediate complex. Now, these, uh, these Golgi bodies, now they help, they help in twisting the helical structure and the formation of the, uh, uh, the, the buds and the proteins. And this, this, this Golgi body, they help in the, in the binding with the cell membrane and the exocytosis uh, of the virus. So this is about the viral entry and the replication. <clears throat> now regarding the pathogenesis, <clears throat> this, uh, this lung surface, they provide the larger surface area. They, they provide around 100 square meter surface area. When the virus, the, the spike protein, they binds to the AC2 receptor, this AC2 receptor is, gets reduced. And then this AC2 receptor, they converts the angiotensin 1 into the angiotensin 2. Now this reduced AC2 receptor, they, they, they act as a negative regulator of renin angiotensin system. And this renin angiotensin system, they, they acts as a double-edged sword for the viral entry and the negative regulator of severe symptoms and lung injury. Now due to conversion, due to conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, there is uh, excessive production of pro-atrophies, pro-fibrotic, pro-inflammatory, and pro-oxidant gene occurs. This, this, this formation of different pro agents, pro-fibrotic, pro-oxidant agents, there is a formation of pyroptosis, there is a program, uh, program um, pyroptosis, which is a highly inflammatory form of program cell death. And this program cell that this due to this pro-oxidant as a formation, there, there forms this cytokine storm. And due to this cytokine storm, there is the, the further effect, the further worsening effect is because of this acute respiratory distress syndrome, the patients, the patient has to get the ventilator, the patient has has to has to uh, admit it into hospital. Now, when the virus enters inside the human body, inside the host cell, what they do, they inhibit, they inhibit the innate immune system, the, the interferon pathway, they inhibit the interferon pathway. And because of this, because of this, the immune system, the, because of this, the people, some people, they do not get the, get the symptoms. And, and the, because of the continuous, the persist, persistent viral, uh, persistent viral, uh, uh, viral concentration. There is a, there is a increase in viral load in the host body and they escape the immune system, including adaptive P cell mediated immune system damage. Because, because they, they in, inhibit the interferon pathway, because the innate immunity, they inhibit the innate immunity. So the symptoms does not occur that's why the, some of the patients, they, <coughs> they get these symptoms after a few days or maybe after 14 days or after 20 days. This is about the uh, uh, pathogenesis, the viral pathogenesis. Now coming to the, the damaging effects on the body. There, there are reports of uh, respiratory illness mostly, but other organs are also affected like heart, blood vessels, kidneys, brain, lungs, and intestines. There are reports of inflammation in the heart and, and, and the muscle damage. Some patients, they have been reported with the blood clotting in major arteries and veins. And also some people, their kidneys have been affected and they require dialysis. In the brain, they have been reported with uh, stroke, and there are, because of stroke, there is a confusion or uh, delirium. And in the lungs that you know, everyone know, I think till now, there is the inflammation, there is, the lungs is in, become inflamed and filled with fluid. Because of this, this, 
this mostly because the lungs are affected that the patients require ventilation and in the intestines there are 20% of patients they report diarrhea as an early symptom there are also report of diarrhea in intestines there are systematic and uh, systematic and reproductive i am not able to see the different systematic respiratory disorders that are caused by covid-19 infection are the systemic disorders are fever cough fatigue sputum production headache then hemoptysis hemoptysis is the toughening of blood then there are uh, cardiac injury hypoxemia this is the low level of oxygen in the blood then dyspnea lymphonia and diarrhea the the other com comorbidities the other health conditions the that that as to infection is are the hypertension people with this comorbidities they they have the increased susceptibility the hypertension chronic obstructive pulmonary disease diabetes cardiovascular diseases and uh, different respiratory disorders are the rhinorrhea sneezing sore throat pneumonia ground glass opacities we will, uh, i will show you the image regarding the ground glass opacities in the later slide then rnmia acute respiratory distress syndrome the the complications the severe complications because of this covid 19 infection are the respiratory distress syndrome septic shock metabolic acidosis that are which is hard to correct then coagulation dysfunction and the multiple organ failure and finally the death now coming to the host immunity <coughs> this the host immunity involves innate immunity and the adaptive immunity the first innate immunity gets involved as soon as the virus enters into the uh, into the host cells what they do the innate immune cells the innate immune cells of the host they needs to recognize the invasion of the virus this happens when the pathogen associated molecular patterns they recognize damage associated molecular patterns such as viral genomic rna or intermediates during viral replication like double stranded rna uh, by uh, <coughs> endosomal rna receptors like tlr3 and tlr7 and cytosolic rna sensor like reg1 and mdr5 this because of this recognition they leads to activation of nuclear factor kappa v and then gets translocated translocated to nucleus this induces expression of type 1 interferon and pro inflammatory cytokines and that they comprise the first line of defense against the viral infection at entry site now the t helper cells they make pro inflammatory cytokines they make the pro inflammatory cytokines via nuclear factor kappa b pathway and then interleukin 7 and the cytokine they recruit monocytes and macrophages to the site of infection <coughs> and they activate the other cytokines and the chemokines but as viral proteins like membrane protein nucleocapsid protein orf they interferes and modulates the type 1 interferon pathway this pathway they they interferes they inhibit this pathway interferon response and because of this there is a delayed response because of this there is a delayed or suppress delayed response of the during initial infection <coughs> <coughs> this immune because of this uh, delayed response there is uh, uh, the 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 immune enhancement there is uh, although the uh, virus they inhibits the interferon pathway but there is always a persistent immune response uh, by the host body this immune enhancement leads to hyper interleukin 6 production ultimately leading the ta17 response and subsequent eosinophilic reaction that modulo mediating the severe pulmonary immunopathology together all these mechanisms results in endothelial dysfunction and extravasation of immune cells in alveolar spaces and finally produces ground glass pattern in x chest 
this this is occurs when there is the viral because of the immune host immunity and the viral uh, reactions this ground glass pattern occurs in the chest x ray this is the chest x ray with the with the viral infected patients and this is the normal uh, chest x ray now regarding when the virus infects the host cell there the the oxidative stress is the another pathway that that damages the cells and the um, that damages the tissues inside the host cells so the different cellular damage that are induced by this ox oxidative stress are when the virus they infects they enters the host cells there is an imbalance between the antioxidant system and the reactive oxygen species these antioxidants they are these antioxidants they are already inside the system they may be enzymatic or non enzymatic and the, when when the virus infects this reactive oxygen this rose is produced the different types of rose the reactive oxygen species are the superoxide and ion peroxide hydrogen peroxide hydroxyl radical and hydroxyl ion because of this reactive oxygen species they they initiate or activate the chain reaction inside the host body and they cause the oxidative stress oxidative stress what it does they damages they cause the lipid peroxidation like you know the cell membranes they 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 are made of lipids in what they do this free radicals this reactive oxygen species they they extract electron from the lipids from the cell membrane and uh, they damage the cell membrane because of the extraction of electron from the uh, uh, from the cell membrane and this causes the damage to the tissues and the cells and tissues also the the this oxidative damage this oxidative stress they cause necrosis and apoptosis as you know this apoptosis is a program cell death and they induces the program cell death this pathway they induces the program cell death pathway and and you know the necrosis it is uh, when there is an uh, uh, there is an injury to the body there is an injury to the tissue that that leads to the necrosis pathway the necrosis so this this oxidation this oxidative stress they they, they induce this uh, necrosis and apoptosis more and this oxidative stress they also bind they also affects in the gene they also uh, they break the dna and uh, led to the, lead to the formation of different fragments like uh, pyrimidine Uh, fragments, uh, epiphytic uh, fragments, and because of these fragments, these are very much toxic to the cell. They they cause toxicity to the cell and the uh, and the host body. Now, in response to the oxidative stress, in response to the oxidative stress by the virus, there are antioxidant defense system inside the body. the different in, uh, different defense system oxidative stress defense mechanism are the repair mechanisms there are rep dna repair enzymes inside the body then the physical defense mechanism they, they are the protective barrier of rose entry such as the skin cell then the preventive mechanism like prevention by the generation of prevention of the generation by chelating metal there are metals they prevent the they they, they prevent the they, they form chelate with the free radicals and they prevent the Uh, oxidative stress now this antioxidant defense system also can be uh, divided into uh, two system like antioxidant enzyme system these are some of the uh, uh, enzymes like superoxide dismutase they directly act uh, on the free radicals catalyze glutamate peroxidase glutamate reductase glutathione reductase then supporting enzymes are the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase then xanthine oxidase these are the some of the enzymes antioxidant enzymes that directly act on the free radical and the non enzymatic antioxidant they are taken from outside the body uh, uh, they are the low molecular weight antioxidants or the uh, they are the plant oxidants these are again classified into dietary sources phytochemicals direct acting low molecular weight antioxidant indirect acting low molecular weight antioxidant the dietary sources are tocopherols vitamins a e c carotenes phytochemicals 
and the scavenging free radical these are the direct acting low molecular weight and the transition metal chains at the inner when <coughs> when this uh, this both antioxidant system the different barrier system repair mechanism they and the um, enzymatic system inside our body they fails or they when um, they fails with the virus or uh, when they are in war with the virus with respect to that if we take the other uh, extra uh, we, uh, the dietary sources of antioxidant it will help inside in, in our host immunity system it will in, in, in increase the host immunity so the the mechanism by which the antioxidants the the uh, the effect the effect the viral induced uh, different infection or the different tissues or injury are when there is no viral infection when there is viral infection this there is a formation of ros and these are the inflammatory pathway this para uh, p and f kappa p p j and k these are the pathway uh, the, the inflammatory pathway and this ros they also cause the this apoptotic pathway but when we use the antioxidants the whether it is uh, the the different enzymatic system or the dietary sources that we we take they inhibit they inhibit this uh, this uh, ros induced inflammatory pathway they inhibit this ros in uh, this in this pathway they inhibit and in the apoptotic pathway in the initial step they inhibit the uh, apoptotic pathway cytochrome c activation is inhibited by this antioxidants so when we, when this uh, when we take the dietary antioxidants The, from outside the body, the, the different phytochemicals that we take. What they do? What you, I think you know these uh, these antioxidants. They are the superheroes. They they help in stabilizing the free, free radical uh, that are formed due to the viral infection. And this is a tech cloud or a word cloud. You can see here. This uh, the tech cloud is a, a respective. it is a, a comparison you can see the the bigger the size it has the more importance more uh, uh, with respect to the other words which are in uh, smaller size with respect to this antioxidant so if here if we want to keep our health important if we want to keep our health uh, our immune system uh, okay we have to keep, we have to take the anti we have to maintain the antioxidant system inside our body that antioxidant we can take from the supplementary diet also we can take other vitamins and natural this phytochemicals to keep the antioxidant level high inside the our uh, inside the host body so this this is uh, this is this is what the antioxidant that that play a greater role in the in the in host immunity and also the maintenance of the healthy uh, healthy system inside the Uh, during the viral infection now the different sources of the food uh, antioxidants are the beta carotene they are found in green vegetables ripe yellow fruits and vegetables like papaya mango pumpkin and carrots these are the sources of uh, uh, beta carotene then vitamin e it is uh, they are found in milk fat i think you people already you know these things Uh, milk fat egg yolk liver kidney and fortified vanaspati these are the sources of vitamin a then the vitamin c they are the uh, they are found in the fresh and citrus fruits amla orange lemon then vitamin e they are found in oil seeds cereals nuts cereal products vegetable oils and egg yolk then selenium and zinc these are the trace metal iron copper these are the trace metal they they act as a cofactor in the antioxidant enzymes so they this selenium and zinc they are found in meat seafood cereals and pulses then copper they are found in oysters mushroom liver and nuts then iron they are found in green leafy vegetables cereals millets pulses nuts meat and liver so these are the sources of food antioxidant that we have to take to keep our antioxidant level high inside the body not only during the viral infection also 
uh, to maintain a healthy body, we have to take the antioxidants. But in yes, antioxidants they play a greater role because the virus during the viral infection because virus they causes much more oxidative stress inside the body, and that is the main uh, part or the main problem that creates the that the does the different anti-inflammatory pathway or the apoptotic pathway, they are uh, induced by this ROS, reactive oxygen uh, species generation. So, now the antioxidants, these polyphenols, they, play, they are the greater source of these antioxidants. And these polyphenols, they are mostly available in most of the uh, fruits and vegetables. These polyphenols, they are classified into like uh, phenolic acids, the flavonoids, stilbins, lignans. These phenolic acids, they are again classified as hydroxycinamic acid, hydroxybenzoic acid, like salicylic acid. Then these flavonoids, they are again classified into anthocyanins, uh, like cyanidin, delphinidin, flavonoids like amphenol, myrosetin, quercetin. Then flavonoids, they are again classified into monomers, dimers, and polymers. They like catechin, epicatechin, epigallocatechin. Then flavones, these are the epigenin, luteolin, bicalin, chrysin. Then the flavanols, uh, aerodictyol, hesperidin, naringin, these are these uh, uh, examples of flavanols. <coughs> then the isoflavones are the diagen, genistin, glycetin, uh, for mononatin. These are the these are the polyphenol classification, and they are the greatest source of antioxidants in the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the fruits and vegetables. So, as you all know, due to uh, the present situation, the present condition of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic around the world, till now there is no uh, still researches going on regarding its vaccine or the antiviral uh, drug formulation. So the best way is, the best uh, treatment is, uh, the best way is the strong immunity. We have to maintain the immunity because people, people with the age, age group people, are, they are the most, uh, mostly infected because of their low immunity, because of, uh, because of their low immunity, yes, and the different comorbidities. So let us, uh, the present uh, direction or the present suggestion is the to keep the immunity strong. So strong immunity is the key weapon in the fight against the COVID-19. So uh, every day, the, these are the examples like citrus fruits, vegetables, pineapple, ginger, garlic, uh, berries. Uh, these are the everyday foods that improve the immune system. And finally, till the new drug comes out, new vaccines come out, eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables to keep antioxidant level high in body. And uh, finally, uh, stay home and stay safe. Thank you very much.